Mr. Chairman, Mr. Brady, uh, thank you for the opportunity to provide testimony today regarding U.S.-Cuba policy. Uh, having traveled from Nebraska to be here this morning, I was happy to hear you invoke the wisdom of Coach Osborne. Uh, we were happy to lend him to you for a few years, and we're equally happy to have him back. Um, this is an important concern uh, for everyone on both sides uh, of the strait for generations to come. The Cuban-American bilateral relationship, uh, which has remained at an impasse since 1959, is now at a crossroads. Uh, normalizing relations between our two countries is a goal that we all share, but the path to achieving that goal remains in some dispute. Um, on behalf of the academic team that studied the property claims issue with respect to Cuba, we would counsel against immediately and unconditionally lifting the embargo uh, without first addressing the property claims that U.S. citizens have against the Cuban government stemming from the first nationalization actions of Fidel Castro uh, in 1959. To do so would be to invite the nationalization of other U.S. assets by other regimes if they perceive that the U.S. government is not willing to legally fight for the rights of its citizens abroad. Uh, Creighton University was awarded a grant, uh, as Mr. Brady indicated, from the federal government to study the property claims issue. And we developed two models uh, to provide a template uh, to be used by the U.S. government in future negotiations with uh, a democratic regime in Havana, uh, if that happens. Uh, our report proposes a dual track property claim settlement mechanism. The first track is a bilateral Cuba-U.S. tribunal established by treaty or executive agreement between a new Cuban government and the U.S. The jurisdiction of the tribunal would be over property claims of U.S. nationals, which have been certified by the Federal Claim Settlement Commission. The second track is a Cuban Special Claims Court, uh, constituted as an independent chamber of the Cuban national judiciary. Uh, the jurisdiction of this special court would be over property claims from the Cuban-American exile community. The first group of property claims are held by U.S. national claimants. These are American individuals and corporations who were Americans at the time of the unlawful expropriation, mostly 1959 and 1960. They've certified their claims, uh, and international law generally recognizes the right of American claimants to be compensated. These would be resolved in the model bilateral tribunal that we've proposed that's modeled loosely on the U.S.-Iran claims tribunal. Uh, the point being here, I suppose, centrally that uh, if we can resolve property claims with Iran, then we can certainly resolve property claims with Cuba. Uh, the second group of property claims is held by Cuban-American exiles. Members of this group were Cuban at the time of the expropriation of their property um, and thus are not protected under U.S. law to the same extent as the U.S. national claimants. Because members of this claimant group were nationals of Cuba when their property was expropriated, International law generally does not recognize a right of recovery. Jurisdiction, therefore, over these claims would reside within the Cuban judiciary uh, and would be resolved by the second model we've developed, a Cuban special claims court um, that would be constructed uh, fairly and equitably to hear these claims. The model for property claim settlement between Cuba and the United States that we devised is one in which the short-term interests of the claimants are addressed simultaneously with the long-term interests of normalized Cuba-U.S. relations, stabilized post-embargo circumstances in Cuba, sustainable foreign investment in the Cuban economy, and direct and indirect benefit to the Cuban people. Moreover, the interests of all claimant classes are addressed in furtherance of decreasing cross-strait turmoil and mending Cuban-American-Cuban relations. Additionally, property interests of claimant parties are recognized and addressed with compensatory restitution and mediated investment awards, while the property interests of innocent third parties in Cuba are also recognized and protected. Nobody on the island will be turned out of their homes, yet nobody with a verifiable claim of property confiscation will come away empty-handed. The twin goals of maximizing the pool of stakeholders likely to opt into this process while minimizing a disruptive effect during Cuba's post-Castro, hopefully, transition, uh, eliminating the property uh, issue, 
boosting foreign investment and benefiting the people of Cuba uh, have been met by this model if it is adopted. Creighton University is ready to assist the U.S. government in furtherance of these objectives when the transition occurs or when Congress and the President decide to act. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.